Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here bringing you another video blog from my home office in Jerusalem. I want to talk today about a uh, topic that I think is of relevance to freelance writers, but which I don't think gets the dis discussion that it deserves on uh, groups and freelance writing fora, even though it does crop up uh, now and again there. And that's this issue of whether or not as a freelance writer, you should allow your clients to use your byline in the work that you produce. Now, the first thing to say is, is that this question is really only of relevance to freelance content writers. If you're doing freelance journalism, um, and that is definitely still a market, it's definitely an it's very much an expectation that if you sell a piece of freelance writing to uh, uh, to either a, a print, the few print outlets that haven't gone under yet, or to a website, or to both, that you're uh, giving, and that's usually spelled out in the in the contract as well. Some minor exceptions to that might be if you're writing wire copy and it's going to be not uh, not individually um, uh, attributed, such as maybe Jerusalem Bureau staff or whatever. So, uh, But that's really an out outlying exception. So for journalism, it's the norm that you're going to be sending in something and it's going to be attributed to you as a freelance uh, correspondent or writer. Content marketing is a little bit different because uh, when we're doing content marketing as freelance writers, and it's really a much bigger market nowadays, and I hesitate to say this because it's not an absolutism, but it's probably a better remunerated market. I've done a little bit of freelance tech journalism over the past few years, and I've been doing freelance writing for seven. So I've more experience at this point doing freelance content marketing. And I periodically thought about pitching articles. There's a very good website I recommend anyone uh, doing freelance writing check out. It's called Who Pays Writers? Um, I'll put the exact URL in the description to this video, but it's very, very eye-opening if you look at what some major household name publications are paying their freelance journalists. And then you look at freelance technology writing, which I have to say, if you can get the right clients, is a relatively well-paid field and it just doesn't stack up. So I've mostly focused on content marketing for reasons of financial survival more than anything else. Um, in any event, so bylined, getting your byline in content marketing is a little bit of a sort of outlying situation because we are writing to promote the company. So the companies don't, it's not really in the interest of companies to have their content writers byline because companies probably want to put out the image that you know they have an in-house writer they have a brand team they're not just just using freelancers so um th there can be a bit of give and uh, pull on this one now it's not you might think that well from the writer's perspective it's a no-brainer right if you could have by daniel rosal or by whatever your name is under a blog that's great brand recognition for the most part, the answer to that is yes, but there are reasons why, and I'm just, this is just kind of coming from my uh, time working in the industry, reasons that may not become apparent until you've done this for a while, that you may want to be a bit more selective. So that's personally how I approach it. I am selective. I don't say yes to everyone who asks to use my name on their marketing materials. I specify in some cases, I don't want you to use my name. I've done that before as well. It's a bit of an unusual request, but clients have usually been okay with it. So before we talk about the obvious advantages, why may you not want to lend permission to use your byline? Well, think about it. When you're writing for an agency or a client, you're not really the ultimate. Typically, there's an editorial process. You're going to send in some writing. Perhaps it's going to go to your agency editor. Then it's going to go to the client. And what might emerge on the internet or uh, print, but let's, we're talking content marketing, so let's keep it to the internet. What might ultimately emerge onto Google might be a heavily modified version of your work. So it could in fact be butchered. And as a writer, your personal name is your brand identity and everything that you put out that has your byline on it, people who s randomly stumble upon that are gonna view that as a writing sample. They're not gonna know the internal dynamics. Well, you know, this went through three revisions and uh, this guy made a mess of it. That's gonna be your name. So that's one really important thing to consider is what's the editorial revision cycle gonna be like with your client or is what you are going to put out as a draft actually gonna make it to the internet, all right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, we've all taken on work and this goes back to the point about your name, your byline. And for those who don't know, I assume if you clicked into that video, into this video, you do know, but if for some reason uh, you uh, you don't know and you're flummoxed, uh, a byline is that just, it says by Daniel Rosal. It's literally byline under the header of the article. It comes from uh, newspaper journalism and now it's using content marketing. So we've all had to take on work as writers or marketers, freelancers. That's not the work we probably would have loved to take on the most, but it's what was out there and we need, or we had a gap in our schedules 
or it was really well paid or for whatever reason we just took the work. Now, those are the times where I'd say, mm, is this really aligned with what I want my personal brand to be? So for me, my personal branding, I try to put out there as a marketing consultant and formerly as a writer, because that was what I focused on for the first four years pretty much exclusively was I'm a technology expert. So if a client in the world of business management came to me and said, could you take on this project? Perhaps I could, perhaps I have experience and interest, but it's gonna dilute from my perspective the strength of my branding as a technology writer if I take that byline. So when my when you put my name into Google, I want you to get technology clips for that's my kind of overarching uh, personal branding strategy from a business perspective. So just be aware of that. What's, what's really the niche that you're having success with? What do you want the image you project to your potential clients to be? Because one thing you can know for sure is that everyone's gonna be running your name through Google if they're serious about working with you. So just bear that in mind. Finally, it may be undesirable work for other reasons, and I'll just kind of leave that one hanging in the air. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, but as I said, we all take on work that isn't necessarily the best work or our proudest work. And sometimes if you say, hey, look, I don't, this seems fine, but I'm not sure I want my name on this. The editor might say, oh, totally fine. We'll attribute it. It's effectively ghostwriting then, either to me, the, the content manager commissioning the pieces or to our in-house team. The final reason, and this is one you might not think about, and that's why I wanted to do this video blog, because I've had this happen multiple times. I'm not gonna name and shame any past clients, but just to say this has occurred multiple on multiple occasions, that's when you do writing for a client and they want to reuse your piece over and over for SEO purposes. So maybe they'll make a few changes and they'll update the publishing date. Now I've had this happening uh, to me for the past year. I get RSS alerts that um, a former client of mine has republished and updated the date. Now that to me is very problematic because if I have, let's say a current contract with one of their competitors saying I can't work for a competitor to the outside world, to that client, it looks like I'm still writing for them and I'm not. I've had this happen with newspapers I used to write for. I've had this happen with clients I used to write for and I've tried to write to them and say, hey, um, would you mind not doing this? but you have to scrutinize your contracts. I definitely think it's a bad practice personally. Uh, you know, what happens if the writer has, I don't know, died or whatever, right? There's all sorts of problematic situations that could arise in this, but it is a common practice that content managers will, for whatever reason, use these automated systems to periodically republish because uh, there's so much emphasis in content marketing on reusing existing work. So you'll definitely see this happening. So that's another thing I'd be wary of. And you could have an open conversation if you're, you know, as a really big client for whatever reason for you, you could say, look, I'm happy to let you use my byline, but I have a few reservations. One, you can't republish using my name. Two, I don't want this to be bylined, etc. Now they might say no, they might say fine, uh, but uh, you can definitely negotiate. That's the beauty of freelancing. You can negotiate any contract, any terms you want. The worst that can happen is that your potential client will say will say no. My, as I said, my personal practice is I try to give my byline unless there's a reason not to. So, and let me just finish on that point why it's a good idea to uh, to put your byline. So there is one former client I had called uh, top10.com or that was one of their websites and I, I used to write technology articles for that website just by and that was one of the first times that someone said we, we want to use your byline and I used to say no every time actually I used to think well I'm doing ghostwriting and the journalism is one thing and I don't want to muddy the waters I want everything I do that I write myself fully to be bylined and writing I do for clients is like a separate thing it goes through cycles it's not really my own um, and then I said, you know what, this is, it was a stupid principle. So I started saying yes more. So this website, top10.com, me just having an author page there has probably resulted in six inquiries over the past six years from people saying, hey, I saw you write reviews about this on top10.com. Would you like to work for us? Um, and the good thing is it can be a snowball effect that you can write for a relatively small publication and a bigger publication can say, because they're using Google as well, right? They'll say, oh, We'd, lo we'd, love to, we'd love you to work from us. Then you get your byline clips up on that website, the next website, the next website, etc. So it can be an invaluable way. So the reason, the reason for allowing clients to use your byline is that um, it's a great inbound marketing tool. Now, the final question uh, that I've seen debated, and it's not really something I think about doing, but just as I'm doing a whole video about uh, the pros and cons of lending your byline to a client is right, or some people will say, well, 
uh, should you charge extra for your byline? I've heard people saying saying that. My my personal advice for for what for what little it matters is I would not recommend doing that. Um, I can see the rationale that uh, you know um, you're letting them use your brand identity. I can actually also see the rationale from the client side of going the opposite way, saying, well. Um, we're losing our brand identity, so you, we should pay less for your byline. So both sides can argue their case. Um, I would not recommend charging extra unless you're like a celebrity. And if you are a celebrity, I would say you might have better outlets for making money than uh, freelance writing. So um, I wouldn't do it personally, but I have heard some people advocating for that approach on these Facebook groups and subreddits, etc. I hope my thoughts about lending bylines, um, the pros and cons of doing it, was were useful i would summarize this by saying i would personally recommend it it does drive inbound business you will find if you have your clips up there online for long enough um, i would say however just to do it a little do it a little bit cautiously think about your brand identity think about whether each potentially bylined if you write for six different clients and they're up on six different websites have a think about whether each of them adds value or is congruent with your personal brand identity as a writer and I think you'll be on the course for uh, managing those requests uh, judiciously and prudently. Thank you guys for watching and if as, as I end up every video by saying this, if you do want to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.